Episode 28, Stephen Was Poisoned. Blair picked all the wood ears she could find, preparing to dry them out in the sun and then enjoy them slowly. She then picked a few white mushrooms, using the bamboo that had been cut into two to cook mushroom and wood ear soup. There was only ginger, garlic, and salt added to the soup without any hints of oil. The fragrance smelled like sawed wood. However, this didn't affect Blair's appetite. No matter what, it would still be able to give her some nourishment. They should be cooked. Blair picked up a piece of white mushroom and was about to stuff it in her mouth when Stephen held onto her hand and stopped her. I'll eat it first, Stephen said. Blair didn't mind and brought the mushroom to Stephen's mouth. She smiled and said, If you aren't scared that it's hot, then go ahead. Stephen looked at the food that was emitting steam and could sense how high the temperature was without using his tongue. He pursed his lips and ate the food. Blair drew in a cold gasp. He was really daring. Stephen didn't even chew it and just swallowed the piping hot mushroom whole. His scarlet tongue flashed by his lips, giving off hissing sounds. Let me have one of the black fungi as well. Saying that, Stephen licked the top part of his mouth that had been scalded. Blair picked up a piece of the wood ear, not bearing to see him eat it while it was still scalding. She put it by her mouth and blew on it before feeding it to Stephen. Can I eat now? Blair asked. Stephen felt very warm inside because of how considerate this female was, and the scalding feeling in his mouth no longer felt as unbearable. He said softly, Don't eat it yet. Wait for a while. My digestion is quick. If there's any poison, the reaction will show very quickly. The rice wasn't cooked yet anyway, so Blair agreed. All right. The white mushroom still looked tough, and Blair continued to add firewood to cook it. Stephen bore with the flames and sat down next to Blair, in case she were to sneak a bite. A big crack appeared on the bamboo containing the rice, and the rice's fragrance leaked out. Blair quickly used a branch to flip the bamboo. At this moment, Stephen, who was right next to her, suddenly let out a low moan. What's the matter? Blair turned to look at him. To her surprise, Stephen's body became incorporeal, switching unsteadily between his human form and snake form. He appeared to be in extreme agony while in both forms. Blair looked at the mushroom soup. Could that really be poisonous? Stephen lost control and transformed into his snake form. His massive body fell to the ground with a loud plop, his snake body rolling into the flames, sending the burning firewood flying out everywhere. The soup splattered out, putting out some of the flames. Even the bamboo rice was smashed by his massive body. Stephen! Blair anxiously used a poking rod to move the firewood to the side. Stephen twisted his body crazily, dashed out of the cave, and rolled incessantly on the wet ground. Blair followed after him, not daring to get too close to him. She could only watch the serpent that was crazily twisting around from afar. I didn't do it on purpose! Blair almost broke down in anxiety after seeing how Stephen was in so much pain. This was a fantastic chance to escape. Blair kept on hesitating, but didn't move back a single step. She had never seen anyone dying in front of her like that while suffering. It wasn't long before Stephen gradually calmed down. He laid on the ground, panting, and turned his snake head toward Blair. He felt happy to see that she was still around. Blair looked at Stephen while holding onto a tree her eyes moistening up as if there were tears in them. Her slightly drooping eyes looked at Stephen, feeling both worried and scared. Blair still had thoughts of escaping, but she knew that it was too late for that now. However, given that Stephen had recovered so quickly, he'd definitely be able to catch her and bring her back very quickly, even if she had attempted to escape earlier. Stephen took on his human form and walked towards her. The first thing he said was, Thank God you didn't eat it. There was no blame in his tone, not even a hint of anger, just pure relief. It was male's nature to be indulging toward females. It was no exception to feral beasts. Their only baseline was not to be abandoned. Blair's eyes felt sore. She said in a broken voice, I'm sorry. Stephen hugged Blair, kissing her tearing eyes, sucking away the moisture gently. 
It's fine as long as you're all right. I've spoiled your food. I'll be very happy as long as you're not mad at me. How can you be so foolish? Blair glared at Stephen, not appearing threatening at all. After seeing the red scald marks on his chest, she gently pushed his chest and said, Let me go. Let me take a look at your wounds. Stephen's scales were tough. His flesh wasn't scalded, even though he had rolled over the fire. It was just that a large area of his skin near his waist had turned red and was slightly wrinkled. Stephen threw a casual look at his body and said, I'm fine. I'll recover soon. Blair had wanted to help Stephen to take care of the wound, but she didn't recognize medicinal herbs. She seemed to recall that scalded wounds shouldn't come into contact with water either, and the heat on the wound must be allowed to scatter. Right now, the best way of dealing with things was to not take care of it at all. Blair thought to herself, her heart aching, the males in this world are too foolish. Won't they get angry? Didn't they say that feral beasts are abominable? But she felt that Stephen, a feral beast who was planning to mate with her by hook or crook, seemed better than 80% of the men in her world. Stephen took Blair's hand and returned to the cave. Ashes were scattered all over the ground, and it was difficult to walk around. You stay outside. You can come in after I've cleaned up the place, Stephen instructed her. No need. I'll clean up together with you. After saying that, Blair plucked some grass, putting them together to sweep the ashes. Seeing that the female's way of cleaning was very safe, Stephen didn't say anything. He also looked for a tool to clean up the floor. Ouch! Blair suddenly let out a cry and propped up her leg to take a look at the bottom of her foot. Stephen immediately threw aside his cleaning tool and carried her up by the waist, asking anxiously, You were scalded? Blair smiled shyly. I only stepped on some firewood that's a little hot. It's already extinguished and isn't really that hot. Stephen's face turned cold, feeling displeased. He carried Blair and walked out of the cave, placing her on a rock. After checking that there weren't any wounds on her foot, he said solemnly, Stay here and don't move. Otherwise, I'll kiss you. Blair, who hadn't thought much of it in the first place, immediately behaved herself, nodding. All right, I won't move. Stephen felt a little disappointed. Did the female dislike him kissing her that much? Before he turned away, Stephen quickly planted a kiss on Blair's lips, then moved away. Hooligan beast man! Blair rubbed her lips vigorously, but in a cute manner. Her gaze landed on the wood ears that were drying out at the cave's entrance. Why was the fungi soup poisonous? She'd only put in white mushrooms and wood ears. Maybe all the fungi in this world were dangerous? Blair felt that this was highly unlikely. Then there was only one possibility. She had recognized the wrong breed. The poisonous one must be the white mushroom. Woodier's appearance wasn't too unique, and it was impossible to mistake them. The white mushroom, on the other hand, had a more generic appearance. It could be that she had mixed up a type of poisonous mushroom with the white mushroom. Stephen helped Blair to cook the rice again before bringing her back in. Blair couldn't bear to give up on the wood ears outside the cave. She lowered her head, saying softly and hesitantly, I still want to cook the wood ears. Stephen said without any hesitation, If you wish to eat them, then cook it. I've eaten two types earlier and have no idea which is the poisonous one. Blair immediately shook her head. No, 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 I'll test it out myself. Or you can catch a rabbit or something to test for poison. There aren't any animals that eat this. Stephen smiled, not disputing with Blair. He just waited for her to finish cooking the soup again and ate a piece of the wood ear before she did. Blair felt touched and didn't refuse Stephen's kind intentions. She sat at the side and waited. As expected, the wood ears weren't poisonous. After getting Stephen's consent, Blair finally had a bite of the fungus. However, the taste wasn't as good as she imagined it to be, and she couldn't really discern the taste. 